move to total reflecting prism. This is a right angled isosceles prism. That means one angle is 90 degree and the other two angles are 45 degrees. And the critical angle of normal glass is 42 degree. That means if the angle is more than 42 degree, total internal reflection. If the angle is equal to 42 degree, it passes through the surface. And if the angle is less than 42 degree, there will be refraction. Consider a ray of light coming normal to AB. Normal to the surface AB. Since it is coming normally, there will not be any refraction at the surface AB and the light ray straight away reaches to the surface AC. Here, the refraction happens from glass to air or the refraction happens from denser to rarer medium. Let's look what is the angle of incidence here. Here, the angle of incidence will be 45 degree. For your convenience, I will tell you a tip. If the ray of light falling normally to the first surface on reaching to the other surface, usually this angle, this is the angle between the refracting faces. The refracting faces are AB and AC. Hence, the refracting angle is 45 degree and the refracting angle will be the angle of incidence here. It happens only when the ray of light is normal to the first surface. So, if the ray of light is normal to the first surface of the prism, then at the second surface, the angle of incidence will be the refracting angle. So, here... The angle of incidence is 45 degree and we know 45 degree is greater than 42 or angle of incidence is greater than critical angle. So when the angle of incidence is greater than critical angle, the total internal reflection happens and the ray obeys the laws of reflection that means the ray reflect by making an angle of reflection 45 degree. Hence, it will be normal to the surface BC and since the ray is normal to the surface BC, it passes undeviated or without refraction. Hence, the ray turns by 90 degree in total. So, for an object kept parallel to the face AC will give an image which is 90 degree turned. So the image of an object will be turned 90 degree here in this case. And this type of prisms are used in total reflecting periscope. Now we can see if the critical angle is 45 degree, what will happen for the same ray? Here, the ray of light falling normal to the surface AB and it passes undeviated and reaches to the surface AC. Hence, it produces an angle of incidence of 45 degree. And here the critical angle is 45 degree and angle of incidence is also 45 degree and hence angle of incidence is equal to critical angle. If the angle of incidence is critical angle, the ray passes through the surface separating the two media. That means the ray illuminate the surface AC. So that the angle of refraction will be 90 degree. In your textbook, 
all the examples are given by considering the prism is made up of normal glass and the critical angle of normal glass is 42 degree but in your exam the critical angle will be given so that you should draw the figure accordingly by looking the critical angle now if the critical angle is 50 degree what will happen for the same ray here the ray of light incident normally and then when it reaches to this surface it produces the same angle that is the angle of incidence will be 45 here the angle of incidence will not change since the ray is coming normal to the face AB. Now, here the critical angle is 50 degree and the angle of incidence is 45 degree and hence the critical angle is greater than angle of incidence or the angle of incidence is less than critical angle. Hence the ray refracts and bent away from the normal or the ray bent towards the base of the prism. This is how we will draw the ray diagrams in the case of prism. First check what is the critical angle in the question. Then for a ray of light incident on the denser medium with an angle of incidence greater than critical angle will suffer total internal reflection and with an angle equal to critical angle will illuminate the surface or will pass through the surface and with an angle of incidence less than critical angle refracts. Now let's go to the next diagram. The first case we have already discussed the ray of light normal to the phase AB in an isosceles right angle to prism turns the ray by 90 degree. If the ray of light is normal to the phase BC also at the first surface there will not be any refraction since the ray is normal to the phase BZ and hence it travels and reaches to the next surface and when it reaches to AC it travels from denser to rarer medium and here the angle of incidence is equal to the refracting angle as I said you before. Here the refracting angle is the refracting phases are BZ and AC hence the refracting angle is C so 45 degree is the refracting angle and this refracting angle 45 degree is greater than 42 degree. I said you for normal glass the critical angle is 42 degree. So critical angle here all in this case are 42 degree and 45 degree is greater than 42 degree. So the ray turns or total internally reflected and it turns by 90 degree. So both the surfaces, the surface AB and BC turns the ray by 90 degree. Now let, let's go to the surface AC. What is AC here? AC is the hypotenuse of this triangular prism. So when a ray of light normal to AC, normal means 90 degree. So this is normal. When the ray of light is normal to AC, it reaches here without refraction since it, is, since it is normal. And when it reaches here, the angle of incidence will be the refracting angle. So AC and AB are the refracting phases. So the angle of incidence is 45 degree. So it reflects by making an angle of 45 degree. Now the ray turned 90 degree and it strikes on the surface BC. Here on BC it is not strike normally and it makes an angle of incidence 45 degree. 
how do I get 45 degree here? Here this angle is 45, so this will be 45 and it is 90, hence it is 45 degree. So it is 45 degree and this 45 degree is greater than 42 uh, because here also total internal reflection happens since the ray is traveling from denser to rarer medium. So it is again total internally reflected and it folds normal to the face in Z and passes without any deviation. Here two total internal reflection happens and the incident ray, the direction of incident ray and direction of emergent ray, the angle between this incident ray and emergent ray is 180 degree. So here the ray will turn by 180 degree. Hence an object placing parallel to the face AC or hypotenuse of this isosceles right angle the prism will produce an image which is inverted. Now for the same prism, if an object is kept perpendicular to the surface AZ, there the object is kept parallel to the surface AC, here the object is kept perpendicular to the surface AC that is hypotenuse, a ray of light incident here will refract because it is air to glass, hence it refracts and reaches to the surface AC. At AC, it falls with an angle of incidence 45 degree, hence it produces an angle of reflection 45 degree and reaches to the surface BC. When it strikes at the surface BZ, it again refracts and bent away from the normal and it goes parallel. The second ray also, the ray from the bottom of the object also suffers refraction and total internal reflection by the same way. Hence, at last, we will get an inverted image of same size. So, in this case also, we will get an inverted image or this is how we can invert the image using a total reflecting prism. This action is used in slide projectors to erect the inverted image formed by the lens. Now, we can move to an equilateral prism. The ray of light normal to any surface AB, AC or BC, the ray of light normal to any surface falls without deviation at the first surface and when it reaches to the second surface, it forms an angle of incidence which is equal to 60 degree because here the refracting angle is 60 degree. AB and AC are the refracting phases and the refracting angle is 60 degree. Hence the ray of light incident with an angle of incident 60 degree and I said you normal glass has critical angle 42 degree. Hence it total internally reflect and the emergent ray will turn by 120 degree in total. When it reaches to BC, the ray of light will be perpendicular to the surface BC. Hence, it will not refract and passes undeviated. So, in total, incident ray and the emergent ray makes an angle of 120 degree. For all the phases AB, BC and AZ, if the ray of light is normal to the face, it turns the ray by 120 degree. Finally, we can move to the prism of angles 90 degree, 30 degree and 60 degree. If the ray of light falling normal to the face AB, it will not suffer any refraction and reaches to the surface AC. There, 
the angle of incidence will be 30 degree because AB and AC are the refracting faces and the ray of light is falling normal to AB. So the angle of incidence is 30 degree. So this 30 degree is less than 42 degree. 42 degree is the critical angle and the 30 degree is less than 42 degree. So it suffers refraction. In this case, there is no total internal reflection. Now, if the ray of light falls normal to the surface BZ, it will not suffer any refraction since it is normal and reaches to the surface AC. Here, it produces an angle of incidence. The angle between incident ray and normal is angle of incidence. Here, the angle of incidence will be 60 degree because the refracting angle or the angle between BZ and AC is 60 degree. Hence, it reflected total internally and hence the angle of reflection will be 60 degree. So, the total deviation is 120 degree. On reaching the space AB, here the ray is not falling normally hence again here it refracts and bent away from the normal so this is how the deviation will be happening total internal reflecting prism is used in periscope to turn the ray by 90 degree and in binoculars and slide projectors to turn the ray by 180 degree. Hope you all understood critical angle, total internal reflection and all the examples involving total internal reflection. Thank you and have a nice day.